While Francis abolished aristocratic titles a long time ago, a king is actually a lower rank than a prince. Well, also, it is located in Europe, it shares its longest border with Brazil. It is kind of sort of the closest country to New Zealand and it's located in 12 time zones. <laughs> Welcome to France! Hello Internet, welcome to Lex Universe. So, France is weird. Now I have offended a lot of people, but hear me out. In this video I want to share with you all the reasons why France is one of the weirdest territories in the world. Because all that I said in the beginning is true, and in this video I will explain you why, along with a lot more. So, if you're interested in France and geography, well, join me in this video. But before we begin, let me welcome all new subscribers. Um, you are really awesome, thank you all for, so much for supporting my channel. If you haven't, well, consider doing that. But now, let's dive in. So let's start from the beginning. When anybody mentions France, this is what you can see, right? It's the hexagon. Well, I'm not even kidding. They actually do call it hexagon. So now I understand why they were so pissed off when Germany took Alsace Lorraine in the 19th century, because, well, weird. Anyway, this hexagon is what we call the mainland France. It's basically all the territories of France that's located on the European continent, but it's not all. In case you forgot, well, there is one more territory in Europe that belongs to France, and that is the island of Corsica. Well, if you know nothing about this island, one thing that you may remember is that this was the birthplace of Napoleon. If you don't know who is Napoleon, I don't know how to help you. Anyway, uh, this mainland France, along with the island of Corsica, is what is called France Metropolitan, or Metropolitan France. Well, there are some controversies in the overseas regions that do not like this they do not like this name because it somehow feels colonial so they call it uh, the european areas of france which is well it just doesn't sound that good but um well that's what they call it. now to give you some overview the metropolitan france consists 82 percent of the land area of the whole france however it only consists some three percent of their exclusive economic zone which is the coast areas that are controlled economically by the country which I will explain you later why that is, but just consider that the coastline in Europe is not that big. And there are other countries that I need to share with. Also, in the metropolitan France, there is some 95-96% of all the population of France. Now, the metropolitan France is the member of the European Union. Uh, they are a member of the Eurozone, so their official currency is Euro. They also are a member of the Schengen area, which means that you can travel throughout Europe without a passport and without any border controls. I mean, you could before the pandemic, but I hope, well, when you watch this, this is all over and the world is not crazy anymore, but you know, you know what I mean. Uh, so, the metropolitan France is basically the France you know. But then is the other thing that it's called overseas France, or France du Tomer. It consists of several territories that are divided into several types of territories and it's really messy so we will go through all of that but just keep in mind there are some places that are called overseas regions and territories then there are some overseas collectivities, overseas countries, some well I don't even want to begin uh, with the New Caledonia stuff. The overseas France is actually a remnant of the original French Empire. Many of the territories that used to be part of the French territory have already gained independence. These entities that I will talk about in this video haven't, so let's not confuse it with the Francophonie, which are all the countries that speak French. They have still some political or economical ties to France, but they are not part of French sovereignty. What I will talk today in this video, well, they do. Uh, these territories are located basically all around the world. Like I said, it's throughout 12 different time zones. Uh, there are territories in the Americas, in all three oceans, well, three oceans, if we don't consider the Southern Ocean. The French Parliament has 577 deputies, out of which 539 are from the Metropolitan France, while 27 are from the overseas territories, and for some reason 11 are from 
French citizens from foreign countries. But from that you can see that a lot more people live in metropolitan France than in overseas territories. But they are more interesting, so let's forget Europe and let's go around the world. So we will start with the overseas departments and regions. The difference between, between the department and region is that, that mostly region consists of more departments, but not in the overseas France, there usually the region and the department are the same thing and they have the same territory. So usually the French people or people in general refer to them just overseas departments or département du tourné. Now, there are five of these. Uh, these are integral part of the French Republic, which means there is no difference between an overseas department and a metropolitan department. What I mean by that is a voter in Normandy has the same voting rights and the same legal status as a French citizen in French Guiana. These five territories or departments are integral part of French, therefore they are integral part of the European Union, they are part of the Eurozone, so they use Euro, and they are just France. The only difference is they are not members of the Schengen Zone. They do normally vote for the Parliament, they are represented in the National Assembly and the Senate, and they do vote for the deputies of the European Parliament, which is kind of cool. So let's start with the largest one. It is located in South America and is the French Guiana, or as it is called in France, Guyana. Um, it's part of five original Guyanas. I already talked about it a little bit in my languages video, you can see it in the upper right corner, but during the colonial times, the northern coast of the South America was colonized by several European powers and there were five colonies called Guyana. There was a Spanish Guyana that is currently part of Venezuela. Then there was the British Guyana, which is now the state of Guyana. Then there was the Dutch Guyana, which is now the country of Suriname. Never stop surprising me. Then you have French Guyana, which is part of the French Republic, and the Portuguese Guyana, which is now part of Brazil. The French Guyana is one of the outermost territories of the European Union. Um, so, like I said, still integral part of France. Its capital is Cayenne, where you can find more than half of the population of the whole department. Most of the territory, like 95%, is covered by the jungles of the Amazon rainforest. It's located in the tropical area, so uh, it's kind of warm all day long. And, well, if you want to see Paradise France, well, go there. I'll uh, just wait, because we will get to some other places. But before we do, um, French Guyana is actually the second largest region of France and it's by far the largest overseas territory of France. Actually, everything that I will now mention from this point on combined is still not larger than French Guyana. Now, let's move on to the Caribbean. There you can find two overseas departments, Guadeloupe and Martinique, La Salle and Guadeloupe. It's located on two islands that are called Bastère and Carantère. Uh, its capital is Bastère, which is located on the island of Bastère. Uh, when I'm mentioning the names of these islands, as we move on, you will realize that many of the main islands of many of these territories are called Grand Terre, so... Well, good job, France, I guess. So Guadeloupe is located in the Lesser Antilles in the Caribbean Sea. The closest islands to it are Dominica, Antigua and the British Overseas Territory of Montserrat. Like I said, it consists of two islands, as you can see on the map. They kind of look like a butterfly. They're connected with this very narrow strip of land. And they're actually considered like French Hawaii. And well, that brings me to the second French Hawaii, which is the island of Martinique. Its capital is Fort de France. It's smaller than Guadeloupe. Uh, it's actually like third largest island of the Lesser Antilles after Trinidad and Guadeloupe. Um, its official language, like in Guadeloupe, is French. There, it's again integral part of the French Republic. It's located just northwest of Barbados and north of Santa Lucia. Along with France, uh, there are also some French-based Creoles that are largely spoken on the countries, but majority of the country are French by origin. Not ethnically, but you know, like 
language wise. That was the Caribbean, now let's move to the Indian Ocean where you will find the last two overseas departments of France and that is the island of Mayotte and the island of Réunion. Let's start with Mayotte, it's located in the strait just off the coast of Mozambique and to the north west of Madagascar, actually being one of the most developed islands in the area. It's a subject to a kind of a large amount of illegal immigration. Now, don't forget these parts are actually part of the European Union, so you can be in South Africa and still be in the European Union, which is kind of... Its capital is called Mamuzu and it's also located off the main island, Grand Terre. No surprise there. Then there is a small, smaller island called Petit Terre and some small islets all around. The population is predominantly Muslim and also this is the only department of France where French is not the most commonly spoken language as the first language. Most of the people speak the language of Shimaure, which is kind of close to Comorian or to Swahili. Uh, speaking of Comorian, Mayotte is actually part of the archipelago of the Comoros and when the Comoros declared an independence, uh, Mayotte actually purposefully chose to stay part of France. To this day, Comoros actually still claim the territory of Mayotte as their own territory, as their sovereignty, but the population of Mayotte chose to stay with the French. Well, wonder why. Sometimes it's called L'Ile du Parfum, which uh, translated Isle of Parfums, because uh, there is this flower called Ilang Ilang that is used to make some very scenty parfums. Now we will leave the country of France and we will get to the so-called overseas collectivities. These have certain amount of autonomy. They are not integral part of the French Republic, but they are still under French sovereignty. They differ in their dependence with France and in their level of autonomy. In most cases, there are also some indigenous languages that are spoken by the majority of the population, while the official language is still French. Let's start with the largest one, and that is the French Polynesia. Uh, it consists of many islands and atolls in the Oceania. Its capital is Papid, that is located on the island of Tahiti. The island of Tahiti is actually so prominent in the advertising for this territory that sometimes they are even called the Tahiti Islands. But Tahiti is not the only place. You can also find here the amazing volcanic island with the atolls around called Bora Bora. And all of them are a subject of major tourism People from all around the world come here to enjoy their water-based luxury resorts. It's probably really breathtaking. Yeah, it's part of the European Union. Isn't that cool? Like in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Anyway, the French Polynesia has a lot of autonomy. They have their own president, but they still do consider the French president to be above that. Uh, so they have their own president. They have their own. Um, they have their own Congress. Uh, and basically they can decide on many things on their own. But there are other things that are controlled by the central government in Paris. For example, we'll find here the French Gendarmerie and, well, the French military forces. Also, the education is controlled from the mainland France. Many of these islands actually are the last populated areas of the world by humans. So that's kind of cool. So moving on back to Caribbean again, we have the two collectivities of Saint Bartholomew and Saint Martin. Uh, these two islands have been part of the Guadeloupe department, but they broke off in 2007 and now they're on their own thing with their own autonomous governments. Uh, Saint Martin is actually located on the island of Saint Martin, which is shared with the Kingdom of Netherlands. This is one of the coolest places because this is the only place where France borders with Netherlands from the north. By the way, the only airport in the San Martin is in the Dutch place and it's this very famous airport uh, where the planes are landing and departing really low above the beach where people take pictures with them and they're just like hanging on this fence. Sometimes they get killed because they're stupid, but you know, very famous place. Also part of France. Then we have the collectivity of San Pierre and Miquelon. This is an island that's located just some 19 kilometers from the coast of Newfoundland in Canada. Uh, this is the last remnant of the original colony of New France, 
located in North America. Quebec is not the only North American place that speaks French. Then we have some of the weirdest territories under French sovereignty that are Wallace and Fortuna. <laughs> this is an archipelago of several islands and it consists of three indigenous kingdoms. They are called Uvea, Sigale and Alo. So here we are. These two, three kingdoms have their own kings. They have some probably more just ceremonial roles, but they still have them. I would say this is like one of the most exotic places in France. Uh, they have their own indigenous languages, the Valetian and Futunan, uh, but they also speak French because they are part of France, of course, but they still do have the French sovereignty over them. And then there is the special collectivity of New Caledonia, which here you can see why I said that France is the closest country to New Zealand, because New Caledonia is located only some 1,000 kilometers from New Zealand, which is not that close, but you know, we're talking about the Pacific now here. here. They are almost independent, to be honest. Uh, they have their own president, uh, they have their own parliament. They actually held several referenda in the past few years, but the vote in all of them was very strongly in favor of staying under French sovereignty. So, we are talking about some 90, 98%, yeah, that's... So the independence is not as strong as many, pe many people think. Um, which kind of brings me to the overall thing about these places. Uh, they are remnants of the colonial empire, but these people actually voted to stay in this empire during the time of decolonization, which is kind of cool. And I can imagine why it may be beneficial for the people who live there to be part of a fairly developed country that, let alone, is a member of the European Union. Because that brings me to another thing. All of these countries, well, none of them are a member of the Schengen Zone. As you can see, only the metropolitan France is a member of the Schengen area. But the whole territory of the overseas departments is also a member of the European Union and also of the Eurozone. Uh, also, the collectivities of Saint Pierre Michelion, Saint Bartholomé, and Saint Martin do use Euro as their currency and therefore are members of the Eurozone. That's, however, not the case of the oceanic parts of France where they have introduced their own currency, which is called the CFP franc. It's used in the French Polynesia, in New Caledonia, and it also in Saint Wallace and Futuna. Um, it's back to Euro, it's kind of controlled by the European Bank. It's usually, before it was packed to uh, the French franc, but it doesn't make sense anymore, so what could they do? Um, but it's their own currency, they are responsible for it and they use it. So if we stretch the remnants of the French colonial times even more, there's also the currency called CFA franc that is used in many countries in Western and Central Africa. This currency is also backed by the euro and there's also like this requirement that 50% of the reserve must be in French treasury, which many people in the countries that use the CFA franc like don't like, you know, of course they don't because they still see it as France mingling in their things. So they're actually trying to introduce their own currency, the ECHO. Not to mention that the African Union has like these plans in the future that they want to introduce the Pan-African currency called Afro. Not that Afro. Yeah. Um, so that's also kind of a thing. But that's still not enough. There are still some weird things about France that will just blow your mind. Let's speak about the French Empire. It doesn't exist anymore, but there is this organization called Francophonie. Well, it's called differently, but that's just the uh, colloquial name for it. It has 88 member states. Well, not all of them speak French. I mean, some of the observer states are like Poland, Ukraine or Argentina. I don't know why, but they're just... If you want to be an observer state in the Francophonie, well, you have a chance. But anyway, that's like the... That should be like the international organization in the likes of the British Commonwealth, basically. Then, there is Andorra, which brings me back to the very beginning when I said that king is of lower rank than a prince. I already mentioned there are three kings 
in the San Wallis and Futuna? Well, the president of France is actually a prince. Why? Well, long story short, there is this country called Andorra, and it's ruled by two co-princes. One of them is the Bishop of Urgell, which is a place called in Spain, and the other used to be the King of France. Well, I don't know how much you have been paying attention to the recent events, but France is not a kingdom anymore, so it had to be transferred to someone. And they somehow decided, well, why not the president? So right now, whoever selected the president of France is also right away the prince of Andorra. So I wasn't lying. The prince is of higher rank than a king. That's a little bit too stretched, isn't it? <laughs> Good. So when we speak about the Pyrenees, there's also this island in the river between France and Spain that changes their sovereignty every half a year. So half a year it's French, half a year it's Spanish. It's called Pheasant Island and it could be really cool. Like every half a year they are raising one flag and <sighs> dropping the other. So <laughs> if you want to see something weird, why not? Anyway, that was France. I hope you found it weird. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some light on well, this very weird topic of international law. If you did enjoy it, please give me a like. You leave your comments in the comment section down below. I'm really interested in what your opinions are about all this. If you have ever been to France or any of its territories, well, let me know where, why I should go there, because as you know, I travel a lot and I love it. So I seek any advices for you. Anyway, uh, if you are interested in more of these educational videos, I already have two. There will be more to come in the future, so check out my channel. Subscribe to my channel if you like my content. Check out my other social media. And see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day.